It's possible that famous black and white photographer Ansel Adams may have worked exclusively in the grayscale image mode since it's specifically engineered to handle images which are devoid of color. The grayscale image mode, as opposed to the bitmap image mode that we just talked about in the previous lesson, can display any value of gray starting at white and working all the way up through to solid black. We'll show you what this means for our Mahalo web image here real quick. I'll go up here to image, mode, and grayscale. Yes, we're gonna discard the color information, and that's what we have. Every single thing here is basically a shade of gray. Now something interesting to look at, if we go back to the color version, we come down here to the channels panel, down in the bottom right hand corner, and if we look at any one of these channels images, for instance right now we'll take a look at the red image, it shows us basically a grayscale image, the difference being gray in this case represents the color red. Same thing with green, you'll notice a different grayscale image when we switch to green and when we switch to blue. And that's because it's displaying the value from using zero green to 100% green in the case of the green channel, same with the red and the blue. And when we put them all together in the red, green, and blue and add the color to the scaling information, that's what gives us this full color image. This is basically what's happening either in your home printer, if you look inside your inkjet next to your desk, you're going to see probably a printer that uses four different colors of ink, and in this case, it would be represented with the CMYK. You're gonna have cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. I'm just gonna hit OK. And the same thing here. You can see all the solid blacks. This is, this is the gray scale, only using gray. This is the, your yellows, magentas, and cyan. If you were to print this in just blue, and then take a red plate, like the one here, and print over top, and then the yellow, and then the black, you'd have your final image. So that's what your printer's actually doing. One of the things that I use the grayscale image mode for is logo work. If I'm designing a logo, I might switch over here to grayscale mode, discard all my color information, and start kind of playing with shapes. Because in the absence of color, you don't have to worry about what mood you're setting with the color or how anything feels in a color space, you can concentrate on just shape and positioning the overall design of your image. Another good indication of how well a logo stands up is how does it look in black and white? There are going to be some things when you're printing for a company, you're only going to be able to print in black and white, so you might as well see how it looks to begin with and then start messing with the color version. So we'll just start with a few chevrons here. Move this off to the side real quick, maybe add some text. Maybe our company is called Vector Image Works. The grayscale image mode basically lets us concentrate on the overall design shape and layout of your work without worrying about what color everything's going to be. For these reasons, when I do any concept design work, I also like to work in grays because then I can concentrate on the overall form of the figure or vehicle or cityscape that I'm working on. The one thing that you know in concept design is if you have a good silhouette, that is a good black and white image, something that you can recognize from far away, then you have a good concept to work with. Once you have your layout and design locked away, then you can concentrate on turning these things into different colors. Well, that's all for the grayscale color mode. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below and send any questions that you might have to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.